China just released a new large language model that changes everything because it cracked one of the holy grails of AI. I think the DeepSeek R1 breakthrough will go down in history as one of the most important moments in artificial intelligence. And in this video, I'll explain why, what this breakthrough could mean for American tech giants like Nvidia, Microsoft, and Google, and how it could drastically change our daily lives in the very near future. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. On January 20th, which is the same day that Donald Trump was inaugurated, China released DeepSeek R1, a breakthrough large language model that sent shockwaves across the entire AI industry. Let's talk about DeepSeek because it is mind-blowing and it is shaking this entire industry to its core. We should take the development out of China very, very seriously. What we found is that DeepSeek, which is the leading Chinese AI lab, their model uh, is actually the top performing or roughly on par with the best American models. If the United States can't lead in this technology, we're going to be in a very bad place geopolitically. Even though DeepSeek R1's performance is on par with Silicon Valley's best AI models, like OpenAI's O1 and Google Gemini, there are three key factors that elevate it far above them. First, it was trained for around $5.5 million, or just 2.5% of the $200 million that it cost OpenAI to train GPT-4. As a result, DeepSeek's API pricing is around 25 times cheaper than OpenAI's. Or to put it in a different perspective, DeepSeek's budget is 100,000 times less than the budget for Project Stargate. Second, DeepSeek achieved these results in under 3 million GPU hours over roughly two months, while models like Llama took meta platforms over 30 million GPU hours to train and fine tune. And third, DeepSeek was allegedly trained using NVIDIA's H800 GPUs, which were built with reduced capabilities to comply with trade restrictions on sales to China before being banned by US sanctions altogether. By the way, I think those sanctions have backfired in a big way and have only made China more clever and resourceful than if they had access to NVIDIA's best chips in the first place. Either way, what makes DeepSeek R1 so compelling isn't just its performance. It's that a small Chinese company with less than 200 employees could spend less than $6 million to achieve it. And with that comes some pretty tough questions, like why is America spending $500 billion on Project Stargate? How come Nvidia is worth around $3 trillion, or nearly 10% of America's entire GDP? And what happens when not just every country or tech company, but every person can access the most powerful AI on Earth essentially for free? To answer these questions, we need to understand how DeepSeek achieved these results in the first place. I spent the last week working my way through the DeepSeek V3 technical report and the R1 reinforcement learning paper, so let me break it all down for you. First, while most AI labs use 32-bit floating point numbers, or FP32, DeepSeek developed a few clever math techniques to use 8-bit numbers to do most of the heavy lifting, and only use FP32 where it's needed. The big trade-off for using 8-bit numbers instead of 32 is lower precision, but they save a massive amount of memory, which means needing way fewer GPUs overall. Another breakthrough comes from the way that DeepSeek predicts tokens. Most transformer-based large language models predict the next token one at a time, but DeepSeek can predict multiple tokens while still being 85 to 90% as accurate as other models. So again, they're sacrificing some accuracy to effectively double their inference speed. In my opinion, one of the biggest breakthroughs is what DeepSeek calls multi-head latent attention, or MLA. That's quite the mouthful, so let's work through this one together. When you compress an image, you throw out any data that you decide you don't need in order to save on memory. The more you choose to throw away, the more memory you save. But if you throw away too much data or the wrong data, you can affect the overall quality of the image. That means that there's a sweet spot for data compression where you can save a good amount of memory while still keeping the data quality sufficiently high. DeepSeek's MLA system is able to compress tokens first, which makes them use far less memory, and then train on the compressed values. That's actually a huge deal for two separate reasons. First, one of the reasons that AI models need to run on tens of thousands of GPUs at once is because transformers store a huge amount of tokens in memory way more memory than what's on a single GPU. So this MLA system provides a massive boost in memory efficiency, which again means the model needs fewer GPUs overall. But second, compressing the data first means that the DeepSeek model itself is only learning on the actually important parts of the data, since all the noisy parts just got thrown out during compression. None of the computational capacity is wasted on useless data, 
which provides a huge boost to the model's performance, not just its memory use. DeepSeek's papers highlight a few more important optimizations to different steps, like how to route a specialized problem to a smaller expert model and use its answer without sacrificing performance, or how to share parameters between the main model and the smaller mixture of experts models. The end result of stacking all of these techniques is around a 45x efficiency improvement, which is why DeepSeek's API pricing can be so cheap compared to OpenAI's and Anthropic's. There's one more huge breakthrough that I need to talk about because it's one of the holy grails of AI. And then we can get into what all this means for the $500 billion Project Stargate, NVIDIA's $3 trillion valuation, and the AI landscape as a whole. But first, let me point out how fast the AI market was already expected to grow before the entire industry starts incorporating these breakthroughs into their own models. According to Market US, the global artificial intelligence market is expected to more than 8x in size over the next eight years, which is a compound annual growth rate of 30% through 2033. But many of the companies building next-generation AI applications are not publicly traded. Think about the 90s and early 2000s. Companies like Amazon and Google went public very early in their growth cycle. But today, they're waiting an average of 10 years or longer to go public. That means investors like us can miss out on most of the returns from the next Amazon, the next Google, the next Nvidia. That's where the Fundrise Innovation Fund, who's making this video possible, can help you. They give you access to invest in some of the best tech companies before they go public. Venture capital is usually only for the ultra wealthy, but Fundrise's Innovation Fund gives everyday investors access to some of the top private pre-IPO companies on earth with an access point starting at $10. They have an impressive track record, already investing over $110 million into some of the largest, most in-demand AI and data infrastructure companies. So if you want access to some of the best late-stage companies before they IPO, check out the Fundrise Innovation Fund with my link below today. All right, there's one more massive breakthrough from DeepSeek that we need to talk about because it's considered one of the holy grails of AI. DeepSeek figured out a way to have the model develop reasoning capabilities by itself, meaning nobody explicitly programmed the model to generate long chains of thought, verify its work step by step, or allocate more compute power to harder problems. The DeepSeek R1 model naturally converged on these things based on a clever set of reward functions for providing accurate answers in a format that encourages logical step by step thinking. Said another way, the developers gave DeepSeek a ton of problems with objective solutions and told it what a well-thought-out answer looks like. But DeepSeek taught itself to reason in a way that gets those answers, not DeepSeek's developers. So this is AI improving AI. And it matters because this breakthrough addresses the single biggest problem with transformer models today. Hallucinations. Most large language models generate one token at a time, and they try to have each token or word make sense with the words that came before. That makes it very hard for LLMs to notice their mistakes, let alone backtrack and correct them. But everything changed when AI models like O1 switched to chain of thought reasoning, since breaking the inference process into multiple steps gives the AI a chance to check its answers, see what's working, change its approach, and even ask a more specialized AI model for help if it has to. And the results speak for themselves. Both OpenAI O1 and DeepSeek's R1's performance top the charts for a wide variety of benchmarks, except DeepSeek costs a tiny fraction of the price. And now that you understand how this happened, at least at a high level, we can talk about what Wall Street is getting wrong right now. To give you a sense of all the carnage, Broadcom and Nvidia stock are both down 17% today. That means Nvidia just lost around $500 billion in market cap. Invertive Holdings, which is a company that focuses on power and thermal management for data centers, is down around 30%. I think this will end up being a huge investing opportunity, so let me explain why. Until recently, inference needed a lot less compute than training. Inference costs were basically a function of how many prompts the model received, and the average difficulty of those prompts. But now, things like chain of thought reasoning techniques and mixture of experts architectures generate a lot more tokens on the way to solving a problem. In fact, it's opened up a whole new scaling law for AI models altogether, because the more tokens a model can use for this internal thought process, the better its final output. And that makes sense. It's like giving a human more resources to do a job and more time to double check their work. If you want the output to be better, you allocate more resources. For humans, that means more time, more money, and more access to the best tools and experts. 
but for AI models, that means better algorithms and more GPU hours. So now, there are three ways to scale AI models. The first kind of scaling is called pre-training scaling. That's where the quality of an AI model goes up as you give it more data, more parameters to work with, and more compute power to use. The second kind is called post-training scaling. This is reinforcement learning using more specialized data and prompts, human or constitutional feedback, having the model practice on synthetic data, and so on. Think of this as the fine-tuning step where the model learns from its mistakes over time, which again requires a significant amount of compute. And now DeepSeek has proven the power of a third way to scale AI performance called test time scaling. That's where the model gets better by spending more time, energy, and tokens on the inference step itself. Should the model provide an answer in one shot or do some retrieval augmented generation? Or should it do step-by-step -step chain of thought reasoning or take a majority vote from a panel of expert models? What DeepSeek actually just showed the world is the power of this third scaling law. And importantly, this third scaling law still benefits from having more compute, since letting the model generate more of these intermediate logic tokens while it's solving a problem leads to better solutions. That means DeepSeek won't be the end of Project Stargate or lower the demand for NVIDIA's GPUs. What it does mean is that companies should expect way more for their AI investments because of this new scaling law, since they now know they can squeeze way more performance out of the same amount of compute. Companies like Microsoft and Google are not stupid. They're going to add mixed precision training, multi-token generation, multi-head latent attention, and the right reward functions to reproduce DeepSeek's step-by-step -step reasoning on their models. That's how DeepSeek really did just change the AI landscape forever. Why this moment really is so important, and why I spent so much time covering these innovations in this video. But companies like NVIDIA aren't stupid either. NVIDIA is down 17% today, but Jensen Wong has been talking about test time scaling well before this deep seek breakthrough caught the world by storm. We now have a third scaling law, and this third scaling law has to do with uh, what's called test time scaling. Test time scaling is basically when you're being used. When you're using the AI, uh, the AI has the ability to now apply a different resource allocation. Instead of improving its parameters, now it's focused on deciding how much computation to use to produce the answers uh, it wants to produce. Reasoning is a way of thinking about this. Uh, long thinking is a way to think about this. Instead of a direct inference or one-shot answer, you might reason about it. You might break down the problem into multiple steps. You might uh, generate multiple ideas and uh, evaluate, you know, your AI system would evaluate which one of the ideas that you generated was the best one. Maybe it solves the problem step by step, so on and so forth. And so now test time scaling has proven to be incredibly effective. There's something called Jevons Paradox, which says that as something gets cheaper and more efficient, the falling costs create much more widespread demand causing total spend to rise, not fall. When air conditioning got cheap enough, everybody got one and overall electricity demand went up, not down. When computers got cheap enough, everybody got one and overall hardware and software spend went up, even though the cost per compute is drastically going down over time. And now the same is true with AI, since DeepSeek's API costs 25 times less than OpenAI's for similar performance. That doesn't mean 25 times less spend on AI. It means 25 times more performance, which makes every dollar spent on AI that much more impactful going forward. And that means we should expect overall AI spend to rise as smaller companies and even individuals start leveraging it more and more. So honestly, as a longtime NVIDIA shareholder and AI investor, I'm not worried one bit. I think this is a huge overreaction by the market and a huge opportunity to invest in some of the best companies on earth at a steep discount the same companies that I've been covering for years now. And as for our daily lives, I think we're one step closer to the AI apocalypse. What's that? Our robot overlords want me to cut that? And as for our daily lives, I think we haven't even scratched the surface of the benefits that DeepSeek's breakthroughs have unlocked because they can be applied to much more than just chatbots. From robots and self-driving cars, to genomics and medical diagnostics, and even physics simulations and weather prediction, Many different areas of AI can benefit from the huge innovations that DeepSeek just brought to the table. And when they do, I'll be right here to break it all down for you. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. 
that really helps me out and it lets me know to make more content like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.